Next, we're going to go through some common uses for master faders. But before we do that, I want to go over how signal flows between audio or aux tracks and master tracks, because there is a big difference that will determine when to use each of them. If we take a look at the audio track signal flow, it starts with the source, which would most likely be the audio playing back from the track. Although, during recording, it would be the input signal. Then it goes to the inserts for processing, with either plugins or outside hardware effects. If the sends a pre fader, it goes there next. Otherwise, it goes to the main fader, followed by any post fader sends. We'll go over pre and post fader sends a bit later. Then it goes to our panning and onto the output of our channel. Aux channels are pretty much the same, except there's no audio file at the source. The input, whatever that's set to, becomes the source for the channel. But the inserts, sends, fader and pan are all in the same order. With master fader tracks, it's a bit different. The source is the output that is assigned to it, and signal goes right to the main fader first. We can use inserts, but they all come after the fader. Also, no sends or panning is available. Master faders can be used to control and process output mixes, monitor and meter an output, such as a bus or hardware output, to guard against clipping, to control submix levels, to control effect sends levels, and also to apply inserts or plugins to an entire mix. Master faders can control either outputs or buses. You can use a master fader track assigned to an output path as a master volume control. You can also use a master fader track assigned to a bus to trim the inputs to an auxiliary input track for submixes to avoid clipping. So let's check out a few ways of using a master fader. The first way I want to show you, and probably the most common way of using master faders, is on the two bus, or the main out. In this session, all of our tracks are set up with their outputs coming at the main out. So I created this master fader right here, just for the main out. So if we pull it down, hit play, we don't hear anything. Bring it back up. Ooh, baby, just hold tight. And we do. So all of our tracks are sent here to the master fader before leaving Pro Tools. So if our track is clipping because it's too hot, just bring it down here. Ooh, baby, just hold tight. I would travel like this to or if it's too low, bring it up here. But if you notice, I also took advantage of having inserts on the master fader. Right up here, I put a few plugins on there. We have a compressor, another compressor, and a multiband compressor or limiter. And one of the things we have to be careful with when putting dynamic plugins on the master fader is at the post fader. So if we adjust this during the mix, it's going to affect our dynamic plugins, in this case, compressors. So watch this right here. This meter shows gain reduction. For our compressor, watch where it is now. Ooh, baby, just hold tight. But if we bring it down, Ooh, baby, just hold We start losing that compression. The compression settings have changed. That's usually not the best thing. So if you're in a situation where you're going to be changing this to anything but zero or fading the song out right here, I would suggest doing this a little bit differently. Let me show you how. I would use a bus instead of a master fader. Let's do that. Let's select all these tracks here to here, except the master, hold on command in the Mac or control on the PC and click it. It deselects it. Then go up here, option shift on the Mac, alt shift on the PC and choose new track. Make a stereo aux input, name it stereo. And that created this. A stereo bus that all the tracks are going to first. So if we hit play, 
all the tracks are coming out of here. Ooh, baby, just hold tight. So all the tracks in our session are now going to this bus first and then going to the master fader second. So if we pull this down, it turns off as well. Ooh, baby, just hold. I would travel like this to spend one. But our plugins over here are still post fader. So nothing's really changed. But let's move them over. Just drag them over. Now let's watch this plugin. We can now move either fader and it's not going to affect our compression or our dynamic plugins. Because over here on an aux track, the plugins are pre fader. Ooh, baby, just hold so it's still hitting our compressor the same way. Next to you. And the same thing with our master fader right here. The plugins are still happening before this and before this. So we pull this down. Ooh, baby, just hold. It's also still hitting the compressor the same way. Next to you, girl. So now if we wanted to fade this song out, we can do it on either of these faders. Let's do it on the master fader. Ooh, baby, just hold tight. And the compression during the fade never changes. So if you have a fade out or you want the ability to move the master fader after the compressors, I would use a bus instead. But if you don't need to do that, just put them back the way they were. Delete this. And put all our tracks back to the main app. Ooh, baby, just hold tight. So that's using the master fader for our two bus or the main output of our mix.